Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Alien Series 4 Dallas figure. And despite this wave being the wave that gives us Ripley, NECA has thrown another character in there, helping us round out the Nostromo crew. And Dallas is definitely an important one to get since he was the captain of the ship. This marks the second time NECA has given us this spacesuit body that we see at the beginning of the film, when a few members of the Nostromo crew travel out and find the derelict spaceship and the alien eggs. And the rest, of course, is cinematic history. So I already looked at most of this figure back when I reviewed Kane in the previous wave, but let's take a closer look. Dallas comes with two accessories. He comes with his, I believe this is a flashlight here. So we have the metallic circle here in the middle, which is actually very reflective. You can see as I get it in the light. So it gives a really nice effect that it is a flashlight. You have the green strap here at the top. It's a softer material. Then this little piece coming off the back, but a nice little accessory. Definitely looks a little worn and dirty as it should for being in the film. And just like with Kane, we get a little blaster gun here. I think this actually was supposed to be a laser gun. Got a scope on top, really cool looking, almost drill-like body to it, and this extra part underneath. Not something they ever really actually used in the film, but it was there kind of as extra bits to the costume. Now this gun is supposed to fit in a holster on Dallas's side, and unfortunately my figure is missing that little loop. And I try to exchange him and get one with the loop on there. But I think we could assume it functions just like the one on Kane's, probably the exact same piece. So a nice little rubberized brown strap that goes around and holds the gun, not super tight, but decent enough so that it stays on the character. As I already said, most of this suit is exactly the same as we got before with Kane, but Dallas does have an intact space helmet, unlike Kane who had a busted up one. So here we have the really nice translucent bubble there. You can see my lights reflecting in it horribly, but it is a nice clear bubble. You can see the figure's head sculpt very easily through it, which I think is really nice. We even have the little ports back here, which I guess would be there to help a peripheral vision but really help let light in and illuminate the character's face. The little light fixture up here at the top. The entire thing is done in kind of a dark worn copper look. You kind of have some of that green oxidation on it as well. Similar to the Statue of Liberty or an old penny or something like that but it looks very nice. It's very reminiscent of an old diving helmet too. There's some little buttons back here where all the plugs come into the back of the helmet. All kinds of electronic gizmos there. Really nice detail around the seams of the helmet. Little just texture pieces that look Really, really nice. Two little ports down here at the bottom as well. And of course, the helmet is removable. It comes out in two stages. We can unplug both of these rubberized hoses from the back. Then the upper section here can be popped right off. And that's convenient also when you need to articulate the character's head or anything like that, get them looking a new direction. Then you just pop that top back on and plug the hose up. But then you can take the actual helmet itself off. Now I feel it doesn't sit particularly well in this groove. Kane works a little better, so I don't know if it's something that just has to loosen up over time, but you can remove it from there and you can kind of finagle it off the character's head. It's a very tight fit, but if you have trouble, you could also actually pop the character's head off with the helmet and then pop it right back on. And they've given us a wonderful likeness to Tom Skerritt here as Dallas. I actually met Tom Skerritt recently, got him to sign a Dallas picture for me. Doesn't look much like this anymore, but looks very much like he did back in the 70s. His eyes are very, very bright and well painted. Once again, just like Ripley, the skin tone is really nicely done. Not just a flat plasticky look. Even his lips are detailed. His beard has nice sculpted detail in there as well. You can see all the little individual hairs in there. He has kind of this leathery helmet around on the outside. Kind of bulges out by his ears. I assume there would be like communication stuff in there. We have all these little rivets and stitches detailed all throughout the hood. Just a very, very impressive sculpt. All the nice wrinkles here as it bunches up around his neck. Seam continues through the top of the head. And then around the bottom, we have the strap going across his chin and even little bits of his long hair sticking out underneath the edges of the hood, which is spectacular. And even the extra bit of the strap for his chin where it would be adjustable. I think that is absolutely brilliant attention to detail on NECA's part. Coming down the suit, we have all the different wrinkles and things around his neck where the helmet fits in. We have the chest plate fitting that same metallic coppery look as we got the helmet. We have Dallas across the front there, the little logo there at the front. This is a rubberized piece, so it comes up a little bit. You can see how it looks like it straps onto his chest here. The little ports here on either side of the suit. The suit is an interesting bright pink color. And honestly, watching the movie all those years, I never realized that the suits of the Nostromo crew were all different colors because the planet makes them so washed out looking. So it's very interesting to see these are accurate to the film. And 
I don't know, it kind of looks like a clown or an ice cream salesman in this color. We do have the coppery rubberized shoulder pads, more great detail here. All the stitching and quilting throughout the arms of the suit. Little control panel here at the wrist as well. And the big kind of hockey pad looking backside there and the thick hockey looking glove. But very nicely detailed, more stitching and just great stuff throughout. We have the backpack here, the tanks or whatever they may be, little valves up here, all kinds of buttons and sci-fi cool random gizmos, some logos back there. This is where the pipes come out of. Coming down the rest of the back you see all the different brown straps going throughout the character, of course where the little loop for the gun should go. He does have what I usually refer to as the diaper, the rubberized lower torso here. The pockets are actually sculpted in there and come down a bit and the rubberized plastic so that lets you kind of get the full effect of the shape of the pocket, which is great. He has a logo back here, which somebody pointed out to me on the Kane review is, I believe, an American tricentennial patch or something to that effect. And it was actually wrong that Kane had it. He was supposed to have a British one, and this is for the American members of the crew. I think I did look that up, and I think that was actually very correct. So the detail I had not noticed previously. And something I forgot to mention with the color of this suit is, though it is pink, it is dirty as well. It's definitely looking worn. He has these big pockets on his upper legs, more of the kind of quilted weird texture here, more big pads on his shins, and then his really cool looking boots with a nice red stripe on the side of them. Very nice looking boots and peg holes at the bottom. For articulation, Dallas has a ball joint at the base of the neck. So he has a really good range, looks pretty far up and down, side to side and tilts. Really nice range of motion actually. Of course you lose all that range of motion when the helmet's on, so you actually have to open the helmet back up to move his head. So if you're trying to pose him looking at something and you need to tweak the pose, it can be a little annoying, but nothing really you could do about that. Pin socket shoulders will go very far up, very far forward and back. Swivels at the upper bicep. We have a single joint at the elbow. It doesn't get a whole lot of motion because of how bulky this is, and it also will rotate a bit. Ball joint at the wrist with a great range of motion as well. Get a mid torso ball joint going forward and back, side to side. Not really hindered at all by the costume. We also have a waist joint that's pretty much the same thing all over again. Pin socket legs that if you get them underneath the diaper, you get more mobility, but you can go forward and back out to the side and rotate the upper leg. Get a decent joint there at the knee as well as a swivel and then a great ball joint at the foot. For a size comparison, here's Dallas next to Ripley and the big chap alien. And I think he fits pretty well in scale. He's taller than Ripley, which seems appropriate and shorter than the big chap, which I also think is appropriate. And of course, gotta include Jones in the shot for even better scale comparison. And I really like this figure. Another great entry in this line. I can see this being one that people might be slightly less inclined to pick up for multiple reasons. As I already pointed out, about 90% of this figure is the same exact thing we got with the Kane figure. Painted a different color and a brand new head sculpt and different dome for his helmet, but a very, very similar piece. But the work done here cannot be understated. This wave in particular of NECA's alien figures, I think is the best wave of figures period I've gotten from them in a long time. Not saying I haven't enjoyed their other releases, that far from it, but the paints on these figures have been superb and the joints right out of the package have been movable without being loose in the slightest. And that just makes me so happy as a collector. I've been picking up a lot of import figures lately that cost significantly more than the NECA stuff. And I pay that because the figures have a great quality to them. But when NECA does things like this, where they are so close to that quality, it hurts. It just makes me love them that much more as a company. So Dallas does get a very strong recommend. I know it's not for everybody, but I absolutely love this figure. And it looks like NECA is going to try to give us another figure like this. I have heard that they are trying to do a Veronica Cartwright as Lambert in her spacesuit. So I look forward to seeing that coming sometime in the future. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been their Outside the Box Reviews. And in space, no one can hear you review action figures.